SQL Server 2012 has some great facilities for creating a time or calendar dimension for your business intelligence or analysis applications. So what you see here is I'm inside SQL Management Studio and I've got a blank database called Bidwix Demo with no tables in it and I'm going to show you how to use the Business Intelligence Development Studio to generate and populate a calendar table with dates that you can use. So you might use this dimension then to perform sales analysis over time for instance. So I will start up my Business Intelligence Development Studio which is now underneath SQL Server 2012 and it's, called, and it's called the SQL Server Data Tools. This opens up the Visual Studio 2010 shell with the Business Intelligence application templates inside of it. So here's Visual Studio 2010 and I'm going to create a new project and the type of project that I'm going to create is an, is an analysis services multi-dimensional and data mining project. This template has been added from the installation of SQL Server 2012. I'll, I'll call this Bidwix Calendar. Now in order to generate the table back in the database that I showed you, and again let me remind you, here's my database over in SQL Management Studio. So when I return to Visual Studio, I'll create a data source and point it to my database. So I'm going to create a new connection. For the server name, I'll use my local server, which I can identify by just a single period. And then the instance name is S12 for my SQL 2012 instance. I'll choose the database that I just showed you, Bidwix Demo. Say OK. When Analysis Services connects to that data source, it needs to have a user account. I will allow it to use my user credentials. You'll also need a data source view in order to add tables to the database. So I'm going to create a new data source view using that data source. Right now there are no tables in my database, otherwise it would allow me to add them to this data source view. And we can see that there are no tables because my database was empty. But now that I have a data source and I have a data source view, I'm ready to start adding objects to my analysis model. I'm going to add a calendar dimension as I mentioned. So I'm going to right click the dimensions folder and choose new dimension. There are several options here. You could use an existing table from your database as a dimension table. Uh, you could also use one of these built-in templates and have it generate schemas based on industry standards. I could have it generate a timetable inside the analysis server or I can do what I'm going to choose which is have it generate a timetable back in my data source in other words back in my SQL Server database. Here I get to choose the range of dates that my calendar table is going to have. I'll just stick with the defaults but notice that you could change this to include whatever dates you want. So for instance if you were doing sales analysis and you had a sales database, an OLTP sales database that went back for many years you could change this here so that your dimension, your calendar dimension would, would support all the dates from your sales database. I'm also able to choose time periods. By default it's only going to create essentially a single column containing the date. However, I'd like to know information about the year, the quarter, the month, and the week as well. 
And you'll see that what this will do in my final table is that it will add a lot of columns with additional information about those time periods. Now another thing you notice here is that, it'll, is that I can change the first day of the week. We typically think of Sunday as the first day of the week, but depending on the industry you're in, you may start on a different day. For instance, the film industry. Weeks start on Friday. So let's choose Friday. Here I can also select other calendars to create hierarchies within my calendar dimension. Fiscal, reporting, or manufacturing, for instance. I'm going to stick with just the base table for this demo, and you're going to see it adds quite a bit of information, just sticking with the basic calendar the basic calendar time periods. I'm going to I'm going to give my time dimension a name. Here you see the attributes or the fields that are going to be included and hierarchies that have been created between those fields automatically. Also here we have the option to generate the schema now. I'm going to choose that because I want it to create the table right now and I want it to populate that table. Since I chose to generate the schema, it's going to ask me a little bit more information. I'm going to choose to use an existing data source view that I created already, the Bidwix demo. Here are some other options about how to create the table in the schema. I'm going to choose to populate the table right now when I complete this wizard. If you wish to change some of the schema naming convention options, you can do that now. If I don't want an underscore to be used, for instance, I want to use what ultimately becomes Pascal case, I can change that here. And now I'll create the table. I can see the generation completed successfully. Inside my data source view, I see the table has been created. And I can go back to the SQL Management Studio and refresh my tables folder. And you'll see now that the Bidwix calendar table has been created. Let's have a look at the data inside of this table. So you can see based on the time periods that I selected that it's created a number of columns based on the calendar date range that I chose. Broken down into the year, the date itself, quarter information, week information, this will allow me to slice and dice my dates in my sales analysis quite effectively. Please remember to subscribe.